Hello, how's everyone doing? How's everyone been? Uh, hopefully everybody's actually been putting these things to practice, especially if you actually wanted to see the results that I've been talking about in these videos. Uh, I'm just going to recap really fast what I actually mentioned in the past video. Uh, it was basically about just detaching yourself from the lie that obviously you're not being tempted at all times. And most of these sins that you actually end up falling into, and then you end up just crying out to God and how you're just struggling so much with these sins. All of it obviously has to deal with you actually being tempted. You're falling for the temptations and taking the bait. And because of that, uh, realistically, you're not really able to just uh, stop associating your thoughts that you're hearing uh, as carnal means and realistically view these things as spiritual because uh you're actually hearing thoughts from demons they're whispering these things inside of your ears uh and then you end up falling into sin you end up taking a bait and next thing you know you actually start uh what's the word uh you start you know just thinking that it's all about you and in reality you obviously should have submitted yourselves to god resisted the devil it would have fled from you but Obviously, that's not how it happened, right? You keep blaming it on you, 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 but it realistically has to deal with you as soon as you actually fall into temptation. Everything else is done away with, is gone. Uh, and because it's done away with and gone, you know, you're a new creation in Christ. Your identity isn't found in any of these things or any of these thoughts or any of these temptations, any of these guilt, any of these con uh, condemnations. Uh, or any of these things themselves obviously you know if you actually are holding yourselves you know diligently and disciplined uh to the things that christ himself obviously has commanded you to do you know obviously common sense you start applying these things to where you should and obviously these things apply to you but if you're just a lukewarm uh christian who just worships and doesn't really do anything they read the, the scriptures every now and then uh they have a very baby um understanding of you know what was actually done for them on the cross 15 10 5 years as being christians they still haven't realistically matured as much as an, another individual who obviously you know just has common sense or they're just actually able to apply these things to what they should and uh so yeah i mean realistically that's what it really, it really boils down to in all honesty uh many of these christians are not actually able to view some of these uh, edifications and exhortings as what they actually are instead if another christian actually you know mentions any scriptures or anything that is contrary to their actual actions and their ways of living automatically you know they obviously fight back uh and they obviously resist those types of wisdoms and wise sayings and proverbs and they immediately start attacking the other individual when in reality obviously that isn't a mature response uh, for any of those situations you're acting in a spirit of pride uh and, and realistically you're like no that can't happen to me that's not about me when in reality in some way shape or form whatever the other individual has accused you of or i'm not even gonna say accused whatever another individual has told you to um to pay attention to in your life to ensure you don't actually fall into those sins or temptations you obviously should just choose the wiser route instead of you choosing your carnal route and just obviously getting defensive defending yourself ah oh, how could you think that of me you don't know my you don't know my my life you don't know me, my story or anything like that you don't know what i do if i pray for more than an hour realistically you're just being extremely prideful and stubborn I already have accepted the fact that in some way, shape, or form, if somebody comes inside of my life to correct me or to say that I'm proud, automatically I have to admit that because in some way, shape, or form, it's actually true. Realistically, I'm not actually able to see these things as uh, as as small as Christ himself is actually able to see these things. And based off that alone, I realistically have to recognize my place. I have to know my place, and I have to really uh know for certain that obviously in some way shape or form you know i'm holding on to some sort of pride that i don't actually view as pride and not only that obviously you need to have a teachable spirit which is the main issue in itself you need to obviously be in that way of thinking that you have to be able to grow out of and continue growing 
out of your old habits, out of your old experiences, and out of your old characters. And th these things in themselves are automatically just scriptural. You know, it's a constant renewing and a consistent renewing of the mind. And obviously the mind affects your heart, your soul, your will, and your emotions, everything else, as well as your overall heart affects everything else as well. When one of these places begins to, you know, obviously be bombarded with demonic oppression, then obviously that's when there is some issues uh, and everything is out of balance and out of whack. So uh, this is when anxiety comes. This is when, you know, a lack of motivation to actually read the scriptures or to do anything that Christ himself comes. Uh, this is where obviously you begin to be impulsive or hasty and, and instead of actually practicing and viewing uh, Christ's commandments is just being no alternative to, to any of the things that he already has commanded us to do, you know. I mean, realistically, these things are that simple and that easy, but you make this idol of it inside of your mind. And because you make this idol out of it, uh, you continue thinking that this is, some, it's, this is some impossible feat or this is some impossible goal to actually be able to um, uh, to actually attain while you're walking here on the face of this earth when in reality you need to put that to the side and just you need to remind yourself that you can do this uh and stop being so negative about those uh those types of goals and realistically have a, po uh, a positive mindset uh or you're never going to make it even in the secular world in the secular life those uh, those types of principles obviously govern those types of lives. You can't live in that type of mentality where you obviously have this negative outlook and then still want to actually be a doctor or still want to actually be successful or any of those types of things. Uh, you obviously have to continue having a positive uh, mindset and a positive state of mind, which many Christians do not have. They already have already admitted defeat uh, by saying that I'm just going to sin again when in reality, obviously, sins and grace in itself is, is not a tab that you just leave open. Uh, this is essentially the type of mindset these Christians live by. That if I sin again, good thing for grace. And just leave the tab open. And and they just continue living their life in a reality. Obviously, grace is for if the mistake actually ends up happening. Not an open tab. I'll put it on my tab, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this awesome grace. Obviously, that's not the type of mentality that you need to be having when you actually are a Christian. That is, you're obviously headed for the lake of fire if you continue with that way of thinking because that, uh, in that time, you're obviously using grace as a license to sin. You need 100% need to be uh, holding yourselves firm and... Um, and disciplined in that truth in itself that grace is only if the mistake happens again and stop realistically using the the fact that it could happen or you know i'm not going to be able to live that type of lifestyle all, all of my life where you know obviously sin is going to come inside of my lifestyle eventually so i might as well just admit defeat you're going to lose more battles than you actually should uh just off that way of thinking alone so uh realistically hearken uh, really start viewing what holiness actually is instead of you just consistently just uh, beating that way of thinking inside of your head, giving yourselves no hope uh, whatsoever for uh, any type of holy living, any type of disciplined living, and in general just godly principles that you're not realistically able to uh, abide by and abide in and submit yourselves to, to God's authority. Because that, in short, obviously, what I just mentioned these things are commandments in themselves if you as a, f a five year five year old christian ten year old christian are not actually able to discern uh at that level what anything and everything good that christ himself has commanded us to do or anything good in general is a commandment from god and then i'm sad to say that you're going to burn in the lake of fire uh 100 percent uh you realistically need to view these things and you need to grow uh, spiritually and mature spiritually in those types of aspects when they actually come inside of your life and i know that your pastor likes to feed you this sugar-coated message that everybody's gonna make it in if we just worship we're all christians let's all hug each other let's hold hands and sing these um amazing hymns and and psalms obviously the catholics do the same exact things you realistically need to knock it off and uh and really set yourselves apart 
uh, from the, the, the average Christian and really go above and beyond what these individuals are actually doing. Uh, if you never take a foot forward, you're never going to actually be able to uh, realistically veer off into your own path with Jesus Christ and into your own little, um, uh, I want to say, intimacy with Christ himself that many individuals are not actually getting. They're realistically just at the base level. They stay at the base level for 5, 10, 15 years, and then they're wondering why they obviously are not growing, uh, why they're not receiving as much knowledge. I'm sure they have certain strengths and certain virtues in themselves, but realistically, they're moving at their own pace. They're not at all moving at crisis pace. And he's genuinely frustrated with these types of individuals because of the types of lifestyles and types of states of mind and, and outlooks and perspectives that they're actually abiding by uh, and living in. And obviously, in some way, shape, or form, you obviously are doing the same exact thing. Whether you actually have accepted what I have said is true in the past videos or in this video, in some way, shape, or form, you're doing the same exact things as well. So, uh, realistically, you really need to view that the path is narrow in all honesty. And these things are not as easy as uh, they may seem or appear. But in the end, it's going to be worth it. So, uh, it, it realistically doesn't matter. Just suck it up. I have to suck it up. I have to do these things. I, I obviously practice what I preach. Or there's realistically would be no point in me preaching these messages, right? If I'm more damned than you and I'm over here condemning you and saying this and that. Uh, and yeah, obviously I talk about my past uh, experiences and my mistakes. That way you actually learn the easy way and not the hard way. Because I already know, I heard these same exact messages that I actually have been preaching. But I didn't lay it to heart. And now, now that I'm actually older, five years, nine years as a Christian or whatever I am, uh, I finally have, you know, realized my error, my mistakes, uh, and how foolish I truly was. At 19 years old, I realistically was not applying uh, wisdom in the Proverbs that I should have been applying when I would be 28 or 29 years old. I mean, that's realistically pretty stupid and pretty dumb on my end and on my part that I, I was telling myself I'll wait until I get there for me to actually apply those types of things. And now that I'm actually at this age, I recognize how dumb that actually is. And so that's why I tell individuals to just start doing these proverbs and start applying these wise things because they're commandments. Uh, you get delivered in the process just because of your heart transformation and it's the transformation of the heart you're regenerating at that point you're letting go of the iniquities and the old ways and the past mistakes of your elders and other things uh, that fall under the same exact you know principles but um, and so yeah I mean that's that side of the video that's just a little recap uh, but Mainly in this video, I was going to talk about how, you know, the states of mind uh, and perspective and how actually being able to view certain things uh, to actually be delivered, to be able to practice and actually be able to be uh, this perfect Christian. I mean, they're going to be exercises in themselves, but these things are obviously meant to just open your mind and for you to actually be able to see how much baggage you're obviously holding on to just through your own ways of thinking and you not actually being able to detach yourself from the old ways and from your legalistic ways of thinking and just having common sense and not realistically applying common sense to certain things that you need to be applying them to uh, as well as overall recognizing that you don't know it all uh, and you realistically don't know me uh, I'm not saying this obviously because I'm trying to throw uh, whatever you know I'm trying to be negative towards you or any of those types of things I'm obviously saying this because I need you to 100% apply these things to your life and, and uh, or you're not going to make it I already know what it's like I already know what it's like to live on the side of the fence where I'm just continuing justifying myself and then obviously not getting any of the results that I want to see until obviously I continue to uh, to stop justifying, uh, justifying myself, recognizing that in some way, shape, or form, I'm doing the things that I shouldn't be doing, or I'm telling other individuals not to do, or I'm um, doing something that an, in an individual is obviously telling me not to do, or just obviously checking yourself to ensure that you uh, are holding yourselves fast and diligent in Christ's commandments and in Christ in 
Christ's teachings. Many individuals, even Christians, obviously Christians, right, don't even do that to begin with, sadly. And they just continue just living this naive lifestyle where Christ has me in the palm of his hands and they start regurgitating these scriptures, but these individuals are not realistically applying themselves as much as Christ wants them to and as much as Christ knows that they actually can. Uh, I mean, they focus more on other things and uh, other things uh, obviously is more convenient and a lot easier for these individuals to actually practice like worshiping or or praising or thanking God and and living these types of things or posting Bible quotes when in reality obviously Christ wants them to go out in the field to actually do some of these works to actually make disciples of all nations and to stop you know being so complacent so self-satisfied with your work when in reality you know I don't know if you individuals have ever, you know, it's it's like the, the a little, uh, hmm, what would be a good example? I would say a punching machine. You know how individuals, this is basically the person, they basically punch the machine, they get up to like 50 and they're like, yes, I did this. And then somebody else comes and just punches it and hits 999. And realistically, uh, it puts these individuals to obviously embarrassment and to shame uh, to be able to, you know, that they were so, I guess, proud, which is a sin. They were so proud in themselves and how much they were actually doing. In reality, they obviously weren't doing as much as they thought they were doing. And the other individual still isn't even nearly as proud uh, as the person who barely got up to 50. So, uh, realistically, hearken, because obviously, in some way, shape, or form, that is you. So... Pray for a teachable spirit. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, pray for a teachable spirit because that's definitely going to be uh, aiding you and helping you uh, in the future because it's going to delete and just stop so many unnecessary uh, arguments and disagreements with another individual when you recognize that you know what, I'm kind of being a scumbag or a dirtbag, you know. And and other things uh, like that, you know, realistically, it, does, it just applies to the situation. Or you know what, I'm being stubborn. Or you know what, I'm being prideful. Or you know what, I'm doing this. Or you know what, I'm doing that. Maybe I should stop. And maybe I should do other things like that. Uh, and seriously take Christ as serious as he knows I could actually take him serious. Uh, you know, these are just basic common sense and basic principles in themselves that Christ knows what you're fully capable of you're not realistically living up to those expectations so 100% you need to knock it off just because it's going to be too much for you and you know it's too much for you you don't excuse me you don't realistically want to put in that type of work you're headed for the lake of fire Christ is being patient with you right now and although obviously nothing bad has happened to you in this current moment or you probably would have changed um that doesn't mean that he's obviously content with you or that you're in a good spot with him whatsoever. You definitely are not in a good spot with Christ whatsoever if you're living in that way of thinking. So uh, just live up to his expectations. You're going to need help. You obviously are going to need to pray for more than 15 seconds, especially re realizing everything that I have mentioned. If you're not even applying yourselves or even doing any of the things that I have mentioned, that should automatically open your eyes to be able to see how much you truly need to be praying for how much you truly need to be asking Christ for help and his angels to help you out and his virtues and blessings and graces and mercies and peace that you should be able to you know uh, help you become this disciple of Christ that you obviously know that you need to become because there's no other reason for you to call yourself Christian if you're not going to be living up to that standard whatsoever just stop Go do something else. If you want the praises of men, obviously there's plenty of means and plenty of ways for you to actually be, uh, to receive those praises, praises, praises. Uh, and uh, I mean, you could take pictures of you actually helping the homeless out. Realistically, no one cares, but whatever. If you're not going to live up to that, those standards of discipleship that Christ himself already has, there's no point at all to call yourself a Christian. There's no point in you worshiping. There's no point in you going to church. Uh, but obviously, you can do something about it right now. You could obviously pray to be able to, for the strength to be able to be this, to live up to those standards. Uh, that way, he doesn't actually cut you off. I mean, these solutions are relatively simple, but 
obviously everybody reacts to these types of messages differently some ind other individuals are definitely going to be uh, frustrated and very angry with my words obviously it's the flesh acting up these devils are coming and whispering inside of their ears to try to stir them up to get them to leave christ i mean you should be able to see through that tactic by now what they actually are doing when they're trying to get another individual mad obviously the message that i actually am saying is good you know it's relatively good but many individuals are not realistically able to see that i'm not coming from a hostile environment or a hostile spirit i'm obviously telling these things because i want them to change or else i would just keep my mouth shut right but sadly many individuals are not actually able to view it like that they want them to just uh to be you know preached uh these feel good messages when in reality what do the scriptures say what do the proverbs say an open rebuke is better than you know smooth words and obviously i'd rather have an open rebuke than the smooth words especially if you actually know how to react to rebukes humble yourself down recognize you know that this and that uh instead of you just constantly living in this way of thinking that everybody has to treat me nice everybody has to be respectful to me everybody has to value me everybody has to know my words that's not the real world sadly nobody realistically cares about you your emotions what you're going through and realistically if it's going to cost if, if it's going to cost you your an individual would, rather, would much rather tell you the truth than to straight up lie to you to, to not hurt your feelings that's something definitely I would much rather prefer to do to another person. That's some one of the principles I obviously live by, is to just tell another individual the truth, uh, over their feelings being hurt. It doesn't matter. Those things are just temporary in themselves. Those feelings, but if you actually truly hearken, uh, to the truth that I actually am telling you, then I may then you may actually produce some fruits you may actually produce some definite change and then whatever right uh your feelings it was at the expense of your feelings but those things in themselves are temporary how many times did you cry when you were a toddler when you were five six seven eight years old i mean those things excuse me those things are just irrelevant right <laughs> you're like 28 23 or however old you are uh, for you to actually be able to recognize and see that you know what, I'm not always going to be living, I'm not always going to be living in those same types of mentalities as when I was a kid, so I might as well just be mature, grow up, accept, uh, wow, excuse me, accept constructive criticism, and be willing to change, and, yeah, uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, that was just basically the recap, temptation, uh, being able to recognize that you're actually hearing thoughts, you're not thinking thoughts. Uh, and because of that, if you actually take the bait, then you're going to fall into sin for anything and everything that has to deal with or deviates from Christ's teachings and commandments. It's pretty simple and pretty basic, but uh, I mean, if you don't have that level of discernment, it's going to make it 10 times harder. So uh, it's pick up the pace, recognize that you have to move it, and I mean, that's essentially it, um, but this video, obviously, I just wanted to mention this, uh, in this video, just because it's of not powerful, but realistic, realistically, how humbling it actually is for you to actually be able to recognize how much you actually damn yourself, and how much you actually are bringing so much, uh, suffrage, and so many demonic presences and activities because this is essentially what it actually is uh through your own mindsets and through your own states of mind i mean what i actually am about to mention is just so simple and it's so easy for you to actually be able to uh, really open your eyes and really be able to um to to see you know how how important how necessary it is to actually protect your mind uh, to ensure that you obviously have the same mind as Christ, or you know, you're going to end up perishing, and realistically being uh, strict with yourselves as it demands. Uh, so grace and peace be multiplied to you, and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ reign in your hearts. Uh, the grace is to know what I'm saying is true. Uh, the peace to know that it's sent from God, and the mercy is to actually be able to receive it. And yeah, 
Uh, so, so yeah, obviously what I'm actually talking about, uh, this is just something that I actually put to practice a while ago, maybe it was like two years ago, but uh, I realistically didn't apply it to my life as much as I should, but I, I, I realized, you know, how much uh, damage I was actually doing to my own lifestyle, my own, well, not my own lifestyle, but my own life and my own states of mind, and the suffrages and the results that I obviously wanted to see that I wasn't realistically getting, uh, and it was basically just, I, I mean, I mentioned this in the past video also, but it's like years ago or a year ago, how imagining Christ being here on the face of this earth with you, uh, automatically everybody has this way of thinking that, oh, if Christ is here on the earth, I wouldn't even be suffering, I would be healed, and I would be this, and and that would be that, but uh, many individuals already put those types of, uh, that even to practice, that sentence to practice, that imagining of Christ was here, and automatically they get delivered and they get healed realistically just exposing uh the fact that it's all a mindset and a mind issue you don't have to wait whatsoever for christ to actually come back for you to actually be able to receive your deliverances or for you to actually receive those types of healings or another one would be imagine if christ was your father like your biological father i mean even then you obviously will recognize your actual place uh, in the kingdom of god you would actually recognize that your father is fighting for you your father will give you everything that you want just like a normal typical father and obviously you're going to be the exact same as christ actually is perfect in every single way uh and absolutely virtuous and wise and and gracious right which is the overall goal for every single christian on the face of this earth um but obviously then itself even if you put it to practice right now uh it is realistically able to just be able to deliver yourself from those demonic oppressions that were on you right now because they're leaving you at that point where you actually are hearkening to it uh and you're actually be uh you're actually able to deliver yourself from all the unnecessary baggage and the unnecessary suffrages that you were actually going through just based off your own mindset uh well excuse me based on your own mindsets of you just constantly waiting for Christ to actually come back, when in reality, obviously, this was a mental issue and a mental game that you were actually playing with yourself, and, um, and yeah, I mean, basically, I was just, uh, I realized that, right, I got ministered, ministered to uh, by an angel to be able to receive that message, and when I heard it, obviously, I was like, wow, I was like, I know for certain that if Christ was actually here, you know, this war would be over, everything would be fine, uh, I wouldn't have to worry about any of the things that I'm worrying about right now. And obviously, you know, Jesus Christ is the Lord, the protector of all, innocent, weak, the humble, and uh, the poor, uh, and uh, those that obviously need a voice. That is Jesus Christ himself. And obviously, it's such a blessing to be able to have him here on the face of his earth. But, and then um, and it just lifted up so much. I got so much relief from it, and it lifted up so much pressure that was on uh, inside of my head and on my forehead for me to actually be able to recognize and see that I realistically was living in this way of thinking that, you know, just to get the work done myself, why wait, uh, and uh, and just waiting uh, for some sort of message or for some sort of deliverance or some great savior to actually save me from all of these problems when. In reality, all I had to realistically deal with uh, was just my overall outlook and my overall perspective on these things themselves. And automatically, I, rec I already knew what was happening when the oppression actually left me. I was actually getting delivered uh, from those states of mind. And um, and the more you put those things to practice, the more you're obviously going to deliver yourselves from all those unnecessary uh, suffrages and baggage that you're actually holding on to just through your own uh, ways of thinking and legalistic ways of thinking that it has to be done as so christ has to return today for me to actually be able to live in that way of thinking of you know christ if christ was here everything would be fine peace would be on earth and and no and you not even being willing to budge whatsoever away from that state of mind and away from that and away from that uh, perspective that you obviously are adhering to and the philosophy that you live by. So obviously, in, in short, you need to 100% detach yourselves uh, from your uh, robotic ways of living. Your obviously just your robotic way of thinking and just stop 
thinking about those types of things. I mean, obviously it's not going to be easy, right? I mean, these are pretty basic principles in themselves that we already automatically know that we're going to have to work for these types of things. We're going to automatically have to, you know, live up to these expectations and standards that Christ himself is holding us to, but uh, still obviously and obviously being consistent with these things. But there's so many suffrages and so many stresses and fires that come inside of our lives that take away the det uh, the attention and distract us from the overall, you know, uh, premise of you actually getting in that way of thinking that imagining if Christ was here or imagining if Christ was actual your actual, wow, excuse me, your actual biological father. And so, um, and so many individuals... Uh, just refuse to actually just get in, just imagine it, and and refuse to actually live by those types of principles because realistically, if you already had got delivered from it. You already recognized that it was just your own state of mind that was keeping you in that oppressive state of, in that oppressive state, and you don't have to go back to that oppressive state anymore because you actually are delivered. It was just a mindset type of thing that you obviously were adhering to and you and you were allowing that devil to actually maintain uh, his presence inside of your life. But still many individuals just go back to Egypt. Uh, they go back to bondage and they just continue just uh, negating the very deliverance that they actually had just received. And realistically not being able to view the actual what was actually what just actually happened in that current moment. They obviously were able to uh, finally be able to break free from the matrix and from the simulation that was keeping them in bondage and uh, for them to actually continue walking in that momentum and for them to continue just keeping up with the pace and keeping up uh, with uh, those types of ways of thinking you know so hopefully you're able to see the actual value of that itself because Obviously, you know, you recognize there's just a mind issue. It's just a mental game that you're playing with yourself. And you realistically shouldn't hold yourselves to that legalistic ways of thinking and those legalisms that you actually are holding yourselves to that is preventing you and holding you back from actually being able to receive the deliverance that you actually want to receive. And you are, you're obviously saying these things that I'm going to get the deliverance once it comes in this form or once it comes in this once it comes in this format when in reality those things obviously don't work with God. Everybody knows that God is unpredictable and yet you're over here trying to predict how Christ himself is going to deliver you, how he's going to heal you, and how he's going to do those types of things when in reality even you yourself know that Christ isn't bound uh, whatsoever or limited at all by any of his teachings or any of his commandments or any of his power for, for that matter right everybody automatically has common knowledge and common ground on that principle in itself and still many individuals don't realistically fully understand the depth of it to be able to live it out uh, sadly and so they continue just living in those uh, pessimistic ways of thinking and just waiting ah man I have to wait on the Lord's timing and uh, realistically failing to recognize it to see that it's just their own ways of thinking and their own mindsets that are just preventing them 100% from them actually being free so that they themselves are actually holding themselves in that same place and in, in, in that bondage for however many years they actually have been in that bondage and hopefully even now they're actually able to recognize and see that they themselves are their own worst enemy they themselves are their only means of them actually being able to be prevented from receiving the deliverances that they actually want and the prayers actually being answered and so they just continue living this way of thinking and eventually it gets really bad and eventually they start blaming god sadly they start getting so mad at god they start attacking god's character and god's person and his quality and how could you do this to me god i've been waiting for such a long time when in reality it was their whole mindset that they obviously were just living in that they weren't actually able to exercise these practices that i just mentioned and for them to actually be able to recognize and see how simple and how easy it actually is uh, to break free from your old ways of thinking, your old patterns and your old habits and realistically conform yourself to the mind of Christ and just be able to think like Christ himself. I mean, obviously, these, what I actually am saying is a lot deeper than what is at face value. Obviously, there's so many different forms and so many different uh, manners you could actually apply this to inside of your life uh and maybe the main thing that you obviously should apply it to uh in your life but still 
you're going to limit this 100%. It's not that it's human nature, but just based off your own uh, work, what you actually are doing, um, what you actually have been doing with your time, if you're not actually praying or praying for three hours or four hours or however long, it's obviously going to... Uh, to uh, to give you the results that you obviously are going to get you're obviously going to reap what you sow you're not going to get more than what you actually sowed if you're only reaping if you're only sowing sparingly you think you're going to get this enormous harvest and this enormous this when in reality your understanding is still at the golf ball size level and you're over here thinking that you know this and you know that because you obviously worship or whatever type of reward system that you actually have already inside of your life to get you to believe that you truly are living this perfect christian lifestyle or maybe not or you're approved by god rather that christ is not mad at you he's not angry with you you're not frustrating him because you're humble you recognize your place when in reality you've been moving at your pace this entire time that you've actually been a Christian. And he wants you to stop. He wants you to knock it off. He wants you to stop using humbleness as a crutch. And realistically to just move it. And to actually do the work that you're supposed to do. Or he's going to cut you off. I mean Christ isn't going to tell you these types of things. I mean you yourself already know that he's a king. He's a great king. And just based off that principle alone. He's obviously not going. You obviously have to serve him right. But... Uh, sadly, those types of things don't work out in your favor. They don't work out how you actually want them to. You want them to obviously just come on your standards and come and meet you at your requirements and whatever. And, and this, these types of things, when in reality, it's the other way around. You're supposed to meet God at His standards, His expectations of you, His your capable, and uh, or don't bother. Right? Narrow is the way. Many people will try to enter heaven and they're not going to be able to. Hopefully what I just mentioned right now is able to expose 100% how true that actually is. How many people do you think are actually going to put in the effort to what I actually have mentioned? Um, not many. How many people do you think are actually going to be consistent with those efforts even after putting in those efforts? Even then, the numbers just keep dwindling lower and lower. Until so finally, obviously, these things are just left with the types of individuals who actually ended up remaining uh, with Christ, even in Christ's lifetime, when he was actually walking around the face of his earth. Uh, well, Christ fed the, uh, the crowd of 5,000, and it dwindled down to just 12, right? And so, uh, so yeah, 100%. Hopefully you're able to see and recognize that these things are 100% a lot more serious than you actually think. They're a lot more narrower. Uh, to you, they may seem like the just simple because your pastor obviously preaches those types of messages that these things are just easy. And they give you these smooth words, but in reality, they're obviously just damning you. Automatically, when you hear these smooth words or these feel-good messages, instead of just telling you to wake up, to snap out of it, that God is infuriated with you, then obviously that should be the red flag being raised inside of your mind. Instead of you just constantly praising these types of individuals who are, pre who are preaching these same old feel-good messages that the, that the false prophets uh, were preaching, Oh, excuse me, in crisis time, or maybe not in crisis time, but in the Old Testament, it's the same old, you know, history is just repeating itself 100%, and, and you're just like, whatever, you know, this is, uh, I already understand why people get in that way of thinking, and why individuals obviously think like that, they think that it's a part of the Christian culture, as a part of the Christian environment to actually be receiving those types of feel good messages, to be able to be in that worship type of spirit, when in reality, you thinking in that way of thinking that is a part of the culture, as a part of the Christian lifestyle, is the exact reason why you're not actually able to grow, why you're not actually able to mature, and why you're not actually able to bear fruit uh, that Christ Himself wants you to bear that the father is actually glorified so in reality obviously your own mindset right your own ways of thinking your own confirmations your own means of confirming these things to be scriptural to be you know the christian lifestyle and the, and the ways of thinking is in short what is obviously halting you preventing you limiting you and what is stopping you from actually being 
a disciple of Christ. You're obviously supposed to cast out devils. You're obviously supposed to heal individuals. You're obviously supposed to speak in tongues. Me, who actually is able to speak in tongues, who knows how simple and easy it actually is, is just surprised that many individuals are not actually able to do it. And that in itself should speak volumes and to anyone and everyone who actually is listening how easy speaking in tongues actually is but still many individuals just begin attacking these types of individuals who speak in tongues because they're not able to write another individual who speaks in tongues is not going to talk was not going to attack another individual who's able to speak in tongues they both already know and understand how easy and simple it actually is to actually be able to speak in tongues that obviously the scripture comes to mind that I would that everyone in the body of Christ speaks in tongues. But obviously many individuals begin doubting or they don't want the gift of tongues when in reality they, they obviously have never preached. Wait, what is it? They never have actually spoken in tongues for them to actually be able to see how edifying, uh, how necessary and vital it actually is for anyone who desires to be a disciple of Christ. Not a Christian, but a disciple who actually wants to do uh, the works that Christ himself commanded us to do in the Great Commission. So the culture, right? The Christian culture, many individuals just not being able to recognize and see that all these things themselves, how they paint this pretty picture of uh, of Christianity when in reality, what was the picture that was painted for everyone? The example for everyone who desires to actually be a disciple of Christ that the first century church gave to us, martyrdom, persecution, ridicule, in, being exiled. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. None of these individuals were promised Ferraris. None of the people that were actually preaching any of those types of messages had $1,000 shoes or had $18,000 watches or any of those types of things for that matter. Obviously, these individuals were being preached the same types of messages from the same types of people. Uh, and, uh, and obviously, you know, they both, the preachers and the people that they were, that were being preached to, they obviously were one and the same. Uh, Apostle Paul, he was exiled, or was he? He was shipwrecked, he was stoned, uh, he got killed, but then revived to death. I mean, he then revived, and uh, I said revived to death, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, uh, and, the, and obviously they engaged in spiritual warfare. Apostle Paul, what did he say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. These are his words. We wrestle against you know, demons, principalities, rulers, thrones, dominions, uh, and obviously thrones implies just overall principles that individuals live by that they're not actually willing to let go. What is a throne? It's something that has been in place. It's not going to move anytime soon. Uh, that is a throne that you're obviously destroying, that is demonic, that needs to automatically go from your area, from your town of residence, whatever the case may be, from your nation, from Israel, from Jerusalem, uh, and all these things themselves. Uh, so that's a requirement. That's the standard automatically that you need to be living up to. As uh, on top of everything else that Christ Himself automatically wants you to do, it isn't limited just to that. Just the standard itself is obviously the standard is the standard, and then obviously from there you just continue going up and up and up doing everything that Christ himself wants you to do. But sadly, many individuals in the body of Christ, not even in the body of Christ, who just call themselves Christians, they're not even living up to the standard. They just are self-satisfied with worship, self-satisfied with reading the scriptures at their own pace whenever they want, uh, and applying, uh, applying Christ's commandments to whoever they want to apply it to, to whoever treats them nicely, to whoever is whatever this and that, and everybody else can, you know, get lost, can go get lost, right? And that's just the type of life that these individuals obviously live by and adhere to. They'll only be nice and they'll only actually apply the commandments of Christ to people that are actually nice to them. If somebody is actually mean or petty to them, automatically, and I mean, it's crazy, they automatically flip this, you know, they flip the script on them. They're like, you know what, you're not being nice to me right now. Everyone is nice to me and you're not going to be nice to me. How dare you? I'm a Christian and this and that. And they feel so entitled to being treated respectfully. Can you imagine if we put any of these spoiled Christians in the time of the first century church, how many of those individuals do you think would still continue being Christians? None of them. All of them would be waiting for these types of feel-good messages 
And they would read one of Paul's letters and automatically they'd be appalled. They'd be like, how could he? How could he say any of these types of things? They're, he's not even mentioning anything about grace. He's just saying that we have to repent and that Christ is a lot holier than we actually think. This guy is absolutely nuts. And realistically, nothing's really changing. I mean, I'm preaching those same types of messages as well. And still, these individuals tell me the same exact things. You need to be more Christ-like. There needs to be more love inside of your messages instead of you constantly just telling me this and that. You're not coming from a very loving place, angel. You know you're saying some things that are very disrespectful and demeaning to me. I'm just telling them to get over it, man. Realistically, what I'm saying is that the, at the expense of your feelings... But you would much rather prefer to lose your soul instead of just hearkening, uh, and just recognizing that in some way, shape, or form that you seriously need to apply those things to your life or you're going to end up perishing and, and Christ is going to lose your soul, which is not something that he actually wants to do. I mean, Christ's anger is not going to endure forever. That's for certain. Eventually, he obviously, is going to is going to hurt, you know. Uh, those things in themselves is going to be like, wow, I said, I did everything I could for this individual, and, and this individual just uh, continue being stubborn, continue living the same type of lifestyle, the same type of philosophy, and, and nothing. And sadly, you know, uh, this, um, these things are just never changing. You do all these types of things for these types of individuals. You show them tough love. You're nice to them. Uh, and just nothing seems to be working for them. And obviously, who's at fault? Christ or the other individual? The other individual, sadly. Christ is doing everything that he possibly can to get you to actually hearken to these types of messages. And you just, you obviously have your own father. Uh, Christ himself said that his sheep hear his own voice. And sadly, what is going to happen to you? You're going to perish in your own iniquities and your own foolishness. Never exercising, never practicing these things, putting yourself or placing yourselves in the same conditions as a first century church for you to actually be able to wake up and see how fake uh, this modern Christianity actually is. How much individuals justify it just because you live in America. I'm being persecuted. People want to run me over and kill me all the time. And then for you to just continue just preaching this garbage gospel of modern Christianity and no persecution and no martyrdom, when I already know for certain that it's an actual lie, is just mind-blowing to me. And many individuals are just so scared, even though that's what comes with, that's the price tag it comes with. When you actually, when you actually decide to call yourself a Christian, obviously that's just what's going to come uh, with it. So count the cost or don't bother. And yeah, so obviously you need to be engaged in spiritual warfare at all times, or you're going to die. Oh, excuse me.
so yeah, I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit what else he wants to say. He says to fight, to engage in spiritual warfare, or to not even bother calling yourselves a Christian. He wants everybody in the body of Christ to actually begin engaging themselves in spiritual warfare. He wants to call themselves a Christian, or to just knock it off and just to stop and just go do whatever you want to do. He does not want to put up with you at all. He does not want to put up with your stubbornness and your indecisiveness on whether you should or shouldn't engage yourselves in spiritual warfare when there's an all that war happening. When you shouldn't call it when you shouldn't or when you should call out these false pastors who go against these types of teachings and these types of principles themselves. If the first century church was actually doing it, then by default your church automatically has to do it. Who's deciding these standards and these guidelines? when these things don't change right and that's the main issue in itself as well and these men are obviously deciding the the standard instead of god they're the ones that are obviously setting up their own rules and their own laws instead of god and these individuals are just leading more souls astray they're sending them into perdition uh, to walk this road thinking that they're actually saved when in reality they obviously are not doing a single thing for the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Spiritual warfare, automatically you're actually doing something for the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven itself, right? So plain to see, everybody is actually able to recognize and see how you obviously are conquering. You're advancing the kingdom of heaven over and on the kingdom of darkness. Uh... I mean, how many individuals do you think on Instagram are, are actually, you know, advancing the kingdom of heaven? Very little. Although they actually preach the gospel in itself. What gospel are they actually preaching? It's pretty convenient for them to actually be able to preach those types of messages. But when it comes down to a real, you know, uh, messages that makes other individuals' blood boil, they'll never have... They'll be too cowardly to actually preach any of those types of messages. So they just continue just preaching those pacified and pacifist uh, types of messages and preaching their own types of gospels, sadly, uh, and obviously receiving their own reward for this life. They couldn't be any happier uh, to be able to lead more souls astray and you're just as naive as ever, thinking that they're not actually doing the things that they actually are doing. I mean, it's a sick world, and these things are not changing whatsoever. Um, deliverance, you need it. You need deliverance to be able to discern at the first century church, and the church in our days is one and the same. This modern Christianity obviously is not that same old uh, image in that same old example that we obviously have but obviously that first century church exists in our time as well it's just isn't these churches that have buildings it's just isn't these churches that actually have or it just isn't these churches that actually have you know congregants and members Ro what is it rosaries the virgin mary a cross or other things like that. These modern Christians are obviously using the cross to be able to advance and further the kingdom of darkness, sadly. But still many individuals are just so naive and so gullible to be able to recognize uh, and see how evil the devil actually is, that he's 100% distracting them for the first century church. His example, well, the example that it actually gave to us, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, to actually get them to conform to this worldly image of the the church itself, when in reality it's, it's not Christianity whatsoever. You need to fight, you need to, you need to engage yourselves in the deliverance ministry, you need to cast out devils, you need to heal the sick, you need to cleanse the lepers and raise the dead, you need to be able to speak in tongues, you need to be able to at least interpret tongues, uh, as, or what's the point, you know? 
You need to be able to do the same exact works that Christ himself had commanded us to do in the Great Commission. Or there's no point in all honesty. You're not even willing to actually obey any of Christ's commandments. You're not even living up to those standards himself that the first century church actually lived up to. To the point that it got us to this corrupted gospel that everybody obviously adheres to. And everybody else acknowledges. When in reality, if you were to be preaching the same exact gospel that was his face... Mike, Todd, whoever else, Justin Peters, and everybody else that these false and phony, and John MacArthur, all these fake pastors obviously preach. And that time and that day and age, these individuals would just shut up. They wouldn't even bother trying to deceive anyone with their own lies and their own garbage and filth. They obviously would be put to shame. They'd be killed, obviously. That's pretty easy to be able to recognize and see. Uh, what did Peter the Apostle say to the individuals who are withholding money? Just for lying to God, just for lying to the Holy Ghost, they fell dead. And Ananias and Sapphira ended up you know, perishing for their iniquity and their foolishness for lying to God. And then you think that these individuals are making merchandise of the, of the, congregants, of the congregation are actually going to make it? That's so for sure, no. Don't be so foolish and don't be so naive to believe everything or everyone is a part of the body of Christ or is a Christian. These individuals have devil horns and you don't even discern it. You don't even recognize it. They're over here preaching these slithering types of messages and with their nice little tongue, with their forked tongue, and you're just like, whatever. You know, I believe it, you know, just because you actually haven't read your Bibles or, or opened it. And you just believe everything that you hear because it's convenient for you. You just don't have the time because you're doing this and you're doing that. When in reality, you're damning yourself through that own lazy way of thinking and that own uh, lifestyle. But I see everything that I mentioned needs to be hearkened to and, and you need to be applied. Mm, well, you need to be applying yourselves to the things that I actually have mentioned. Character, fruits, your eternal character, this being the formative period for heaven itself. And that's that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Obviously it's all of it all of the experiences that happen to you in this lifetime are obviously meant to form your eternal character. This is why the fires even come to you in the first place. Because if no fires come inside of your life, you're obviously not going to actually build this this good character, this godly character, to be able to be more Christ-like. Obviously, Christ himself was a king, was a great king. Uh, he obviously suffered for for nothing, right? What did he realistically suffer for? He was perfectly sinless. He was perfect. Yeah, he was suffering, and people were trying to kill him, and, and other things like that. What is what type of example is that for everyone? You're gonna to have to suffer for some things that you just didn't do, and it is what it is, and you're just gonna to have to move on, pick up the pieces, leave the pieces on the floor, and move on because realistically, nothing is going to change. Uh, people are always going to be people, and people have always been people. So uh, you're gonna to have to suffer for some things that you didn't actually do, sir. So, you have to engage in spiritual warfare. You're going to have to call out these phony pastors for their garbage uh, because that's what it is. Uh, and you're going to have to 100% just knock it off and stop uh, setting the standard of what it is to actually be a Christian and let Christ do his work at once in your life. I mean, realistically, it's pretty mind-blowing. I realistically don't even know how many individuals who call themselves Christians have actually let, have actually let Christ uh, work inside of their lives. They just continue just letting him work inside of their lives according to those types of standards and according to their types of standards uh, without any aid or any help whatsoever uh, from God, from Christ, from the Holy Ghost. No one but themselves. Uh, so 
but yeah, I'm gonna have Logan go see what else he wants to say. Practices, practices of mindsets and just living in this type of ways of thinking, imagining, oh wow, excuse me, I'm like slurring my words. Imagining this life that is already over and done with. Christ himself is already reigning here on the face of this earth and just living and staying in that same way of thinking as obviously you're going to be delivering yourself from all, from all these types of temptations that are just going to be bombarding you on a daily basis. As well as you not actually being able to live in peace and to have that peace inside of your life that everything is fine, everything is working out for those that love God and everything is good whether it's good whether it's evil that comes inside of your life automatically is 100 percent good because it came from god and god allowed it for whatever reasons for reasons of his own and realistically i shouldn't complain because i'm just a creation i'm a little grain of sand in the sands of time and that's all i am thank you god for this evil uh, well i mean you can't realistically thank him for those types of things you just have to bless him and be willing to accept that he could have did something a lot more evil uh, and he definitely could have he definitely could have paid you back for that evil a lot sooner he was patient with you and what a, and you know it is what it is but I'm going to ask uh, Jesus Christ what he wants to say. Yep, he says your eternal character. You 100% need to be consistently uh, working on your eternal character. And whatever form is that the, these tests are going to come inside of your life. Fires, suffrages, tribulations, shipwrecks, exilements, uh, persecution, martyrdom, whatever the case may actually be all of these things and all of these suffrages automatically need to be viewed as beneficial to your own overall character or just stop it and knock it off and repent because that's what they actually are every single test that comes inside of your life is automatically beneficial to your internal character but people just want to live in this bratty way of thinking and this spoiled uh christianity way of thinking this American, this spoiled American way of thinking, obviously everybody, everyone across the whole globe and across the whole earth knows for certain that Americans are just spoiled. They're brats. They're annoying. They don't know what it actually is to suffer. They had everything so good all of their life and forever. Christian cannot afford to live in that way of thinking because it is not going to it, it's like water and oil in all honesty you want to be this Christian you want to have this good growth and development but then you still want everything to be convenient for you you want you want no suffrage you want a Ferrari you want a Lamborghini uh, you want this and that but you're not gonna get this or that 100% you're going to get martyrdom you're going to suffer in the same exact manner as the first century church. And that's it. That's, that's final. If you disagree or you think it's going to be nice and sweet because you live in America, you're obviously going to, uh, to damn yourself and destroy yourself. Suck it up. Accept it. Uh, uh, honestly, I don't even know what else to talk about. I mean, I said a mouthful in this video. I kind of stuttered a lot, mumbled and jumbled my words here and there. I don't even know why it was staying.
just change. Be like angels. Be like the angels. This W is so stubborn. Fight, fight for your lives, literally, because that's what you have to do, unfortunately. Every individual who is in the body of Christ is obviously called to fight for their lives. And because there's an all-out war happening, they're being tempted on a daily basis. They're falling for these temptations, and if that doesn't expose the fact that you have to fight for your lives, I don't know what will. All you are is being tempted. All you are is being bombarded with various types of temptations. And you still don't live in that way of thinking. And you refuse to actually submit yourself to that authority and that truth in itself. That you must and you have to be fighting for your lives because that's what your life demands. And that's what your life is. Just one giant war. And then you sit here and you just want to worship. You sit here and you just want to do this. You sit here and you just want to be so satisfied. You sit here and you want to go to Bible college. I didn't even know that was a thing. You sit here and you just want to be a prophet. You sit here you want to be an apostle. All these things automatically have to deal with the flesh uh, and the carnality of Christianity. It has nothing to do with actual real true christianity if you're a real true christian automatically you already have recognized that it isn't even about you whatsoever and you calling yourself and wanting to call yourself an apostle or a prophet automatically has to deal with the flesh itself because of the you obviously want fame you obviously want attention you want individuals to be able to recognize you for your your status you want people to obviously treat you a lot nicer uh, then they should, when in reality, they should obviously treat you like garbage because that's what you are. You want to be a prophet, you want to be an apostle, you want to use these titles in themselves to get whatever benefits you for these benefits. Well, sad to say, but you're actually a piece of trash for that. I don't call myself a prophet. I'm in the Bible. I don't even want to be a prophet. <sighs> I'm even more than a prophet. I'm a shepherd. It's just sad. But these individuals obviously would much rather prefer to to get the notoriety and the fame and the fortune and this and that. Are you in the Bible? Name one scripture that's about you. I can name so many about me. Isaiah 63. Hopefully that teaches you to shut the hell up, because I honestly don't want to hear anything that you have to say. Change. Or you just stop. I'm telling you right now, if you refuse to change and you refuse to hearken, you're going to die. I'm not going to kill you. Somebody else definitely will. Knock it off. This is not a war that you're going to win. And this is not a war that you will win. Count your blessings. Bless God. Praise God. Thank God. Be grateful. Be thankful. Be appreciative of everything that has happened inside of your life. Hopefully now you're actually able to see that all of it, all the hardships, all the struggles, all the tears, all the sweat automatically you recognize that it was just meant to benefit you. It was all for your eternal character. But sadly, how many of those tears, how many of those emotions turn into anger, turn into frustrations, turn into doubt, it turned into everything about you and not the bigger picture. That's sad. So many things could have been avoided if you just would have had a good attitude about those types of hardships and those types of suffrages. But you wanted to be spoiled. You wanted to act bratty. And it's 
that you suffered and paid the consequences for it. Repent and change. It's not too late, especially if you're hearing this message. Go, do it now. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. Apply it to your life. It matters more to me if you apply it to you than you actually listening to this video over and over again. <laughs> Write notes. Do good things. Be good people. And definitely never be stubborn. Pray for the teachable spirit. Pray to actually be able to Break that curse of stubbornness because you need strength. Pray for love. Pray for your, oh, excuse me. Pray for your love to increase, multiply, and abound. Pray for wisdom. Pray for pray to be teachable. I mean, I mentioned a lot in this video of, of things that you need to be praying for. Hopefully that's able to open your eyes as well to be able to see that you need to spend more than fifty more than fifteen seconds praying. <laughs> because those little fifteen second prayers are not going to cut it whatsoever with God, especially if there's other individuals who are uh, calling themselves Christians or disciples of Christ or praying for way longer than fifteen seconds, for praying for an hour, two hours committed to praying these types of two-hour prayers daily and then you just go with your little 15 second prayers you honestly don't think that christ is able to to see what that actually is at face value and then you start saying these types of things i love you christ he's looking at your actions and then he's looking at the other individuals as actions He's looking at what you actually are capable of, and then you still have the nerve to actually say those types of things like, I love you, Christ, which could be half true, but realistically, what is wrong with you? Why don't, why don't you live up to those expectations and what you're actually capable of? Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna break these curses up so that way you actually are able to, and that way you're actually able to see that those things are actually real. I'm going to cast those curses out of your vessel as well as out of your mind, your heart, soul, will, and emotions as well as losing graces and blessings and virtues because you need them in all honesty. Everything that you've noticed that is actually good inside of me or it's just graces and graces of virtues. Yeah. Not me. All Christ. All spirit. Scary. Pray. Pray that you actually may be able to produce works, meet for repentance and for forgiveness. Because you are not entitled to it whatsoever. That's a false doctrine that's run amok on the face of this earth. Now everybody who is a Christian is automatically entitled to forgiveness. When none of you are obeying the law of Moses, none of you are obeying the law of wisdom, none of you are actually obeying Christ's commandments, which is even crazier. And you still have, and you somehow think you're entitled to forgiveness when you're not doing anything Christian-like. It's sad. It's so pathetic. And just based off those little standards that you obviously have set up for yourselves. That automatically defines you as a Christian. Instead of letting Christ define you. And define what it is to be a Christian. You let your pastor decide. You let your pastor define. You let your shepherd define. When these things are a lot more and more. A lot more, way more and more difficult than you actually think. And you're just like, well, whatever. My pastor says this, my pastor says that. Well, what does Jesus say? 
This is just so sad. It's realistically that simple. What did Jesus say? What did God say? Not what did you say? Repent. Bye. Love you.